Hey guys, my name is Haley, and today I'm going to be filming my April wrap-up. So I actually didn't read a ton of books, like multiple books in the month of April, but I did read a very long book, so I think that makes up for it. At least to me it does, because <laughs> it's a book that I've been wanting to get to for a while. This is also going to be my wrap-up for Tome Topple, since I did only finish one book for that. Spoiler. But let's just get right on into it. These first couple books feel- it feels like I read them so long ago because Tome Topple was two weeks long and I only finished one book during Tome Topple, so these feel like I read them a long time ago. But <laughs> the first book that I finished was Lincoln and the Bardo by George Saunders and I loved this. This is definitely one of my favorite books I've read so far this year. It's so weird and different from anything that I've read. Like I said in my book haul, it's kind of set up in a sort of almost like a script format where it'll be like instead of the name and then the line it'll be the line and then underneath it a historical figure name of the spirits that are living in this graveyard that Lincoln is visiting his dead son in and it's just a very weird supernatural take on the death of Lincoln's son and I thought it was so interesting. It, I read it in the span of like a couple hours because it is really easy to get through. I tabbed up a bunch of lines that I really liked and I'm just so happy that I picked this up on Chris's recommendation from The Reading Roads. If you want something that's a little bit different and kind of strange and I doubt that you've seen anything like this before but if you do or if you have let me know because I would love to read something else along these lines. But I gave this, I believe, a 4.5 stars and I highly recommend it. I loved it. I'm so happy that I bought it. Next up, I read Buffering by Hannah Hart. This is her YouTuber book but memoir of her life. Her mother has a mental illness and that really affected her childhood and her siblings. And I just... This made me, like a lot of the YouTuber memoirs, this made me just respect Hannah so, so much that she's built this community online, on YouTube especially. And I'm actually just so happy that I like this one, especially after not liking Binge by Tyler Oakley. I was really scared that those first couple YouTuber books that I read were a fluke, but thankfully it wasn't. If you are at all interested in mental illness or Hannah's life in general, like if you know who she is, she has the show My Drunk Kitchen on YouTube is what she's most well known for. And she's actually really good friends with Tyler Oakley and a lot of the bigger YouTubers, but I just, I highly recommend this. She also is in a movie that's on, I don't know if it's still on Netflix, it used to be called Camp Dakota with her friends uh, Mamrie Hart and Grace Helbig. So if you like either of them, I highly recommend that movie. I really enjoyed it. I also just love this book. It's beautiful. It's one of those heavy hardcovers with like the really thick pages and everything. I think the title of this definitely fit her memoir very, very well. It seriously feels like so long ago that I read these because I was reading for Tome Topple for so long. <laughs> Next up I read Horror Store by Grady Hendrix and I was really excited for this because I really liked the concept of like a haunted store. Because I wanted a little bit of a thriller, I wanted something scary, I heard this was scary, it wasn't scary. And I was very disappointed, I was very sad. It could have been, I saw the potential for it to be but the whole concept of like a prison, an old prison. It was interesting. I liked that aspect of it, but it wasn't remotely scary, even though the back cover gives you a better idea of some of the scariness with the hands coming out or on the front with the faces. But I ended up giving this three stars, and it was mostly because the writing was really bad, <laughs> and I was really sad about it, but I just really didn't like the writing. I didn't mesh with it. I I didn't mesh with the characters, they all felt kind of one-dimensional to me. There were parts of this that I really liked, but not enough, I don't think, for me to keep it. I think I'm gonna end up getting rid of it because it was just barely good enough to have a three-star rating for me, but it was fun. It was a little fun day-long read of me reading throughout. It's a really fast read, I will give it that. It's only like literally 200 pages, but yeah. Although I did really like the open ending, I will say that. 
So if you like open endings or like kind of ominous open endings especially, I do recommend this. And then Tome Topple started. And as you know, I started off Tome Topple with a TBR of The Name of the Wind, The Diviners, and possibly Lady Midnight. So we're going to start with, I am currently reading Lady Midnight. I'm about coming up on halfway through it. I just did not get to it during the readathon, and when I explain, you might realize why. So I did finish The Wise Man's Fear. Did I say the name of the wind earlier? Oh, coffee. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I did finish The Wise Man's Fear. This book is a thousand pages. Parts of it were slow. Which doesn't really surprise me because even parts of The Name of the Wind were slow, but I love so many of the characters so much that I don't normally have to like slog through it. I also got very busy during those two weeks because my friend had a bridal shower and just all kinds of things were going on all at the same time. So it wasn't a great time for a readathon for me, but I did end up finishing this. I, I honestly think my favorite part about this series is Master Namer, Elodin, and Ari. And if you've read this series, you know who those people are, and I love them so much. <laughs> and I do really love Kavoth, too. I don't know how I feel about Denna still. I don't really like her that much. And I kind of felt like the whole Faye aspect of this got really weird. <laughs> and that was where I was struggling the most while reading this, and I was stuck there for like a solid week while I was slogging through the fey portions of this because it was just so over-sexualized and then Kavoth came out of there really weird, like a completely different person and I understand why but I was also didn't really enjoy reading about him being like that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it but that was definitely a struggle for me. I did like things that were revealed about the Chronicler. I really like Bast. I really like all of the teachers at the school. I love the school setting and I think that was a big part of why I struggled with the second half of this is that he's not in school and I really like just being at the university but I did enjoy it. I gave it I think a 4.5 star just because parts of it were slowing me down but I love Elodin too much and he's by far one of my favorite fictional characters ever. I just he's so weird and he's so funny and he's so like Mad Hatter-esque and I love it. I love the hijinks he leads Kavoth on in this and like his classes were ridiculous and so funny and I loved it. But he's so effective and I just, I could talk about Elodin for hours but he's not even the main character. He's not even like that big of a character. Overall I really enjoyed this. I think I enjoyed it slightly less than The Name of the Wind just because of being taken out of the university setting but I still am very excited to finally read the third book if it ever comes out. <laughs> I'm also very excited to read Ari's novella. So The Wise Men's Fear counted for read a book that's part of a series and an adult book. And then I did start a buddy read with Maxine from There and Back Again <laughs> of The Diviners. And here's the deal. <laughs> I got this far, I believe it's like 200 pages into it, 217 pages into it. We were buddy reading it fine, we were both kind of busy so we weren't getting too far, but I also just really didn't like this and I was really disappointed. I've been hearing fantastic things about this for years and I hated both of the main characters that we were seeing. I really didn't like the writing style, which really surprised me actually. I felt like it was too simplistic and boring. And the only thing that was remotely interesting to me was the satanic character in here named Naughty John. And even that got taken a little too far, 200 pages in. I just felt like it was too Christian cult, like demonic worship thing. And a lot of the time that stuff annoys me because I hate that it paints, especially when it's too close to Christianity and they use Bible out of context, which happened a lot in here. I just, it rubs me the wrong way. <laughs> and I got to a point where we were learning more about the mystery and it was definitely going in that direction. And I just feel like stuff like that and scary movies like that paint Christianity in a bad light and that's why a lot of people have problems with Christianity because that's most of what they've seen is from movies 
and other things that are bad representations, so that is the reason why I DNF'd this. I don't really intend to pick it up again because the reasons I put it down were like personal ones, so also I just really didn't like the writing, which I've never heard anybody say that Liva Bray had like bad writing, so I don't know if that was just me or what. But it was really sad because I've been looking forward to this series for years. I actually almost bought the sequel because I figured I would like it and I'm really glad that I didn't now because... I ended up DNFing it, and I might hang on to it for a little bit, so if you can put a really strong case for this, we'll see, but yeah, definitely DNF to this, and don't, as of right now, have any intentions on finishing it. So that was how I finished off Tone Topple, <laughs> and that's the main reason. Why I did start Lady Midnight during the readathon, like the last couple days of it, because I was intending on finishing The Diviners. In the last, like, five days of the readathon, I was just gonna slog right through it, but once we got to that part where I ended up stopping, I just, I couldn't do it. <laughs> so I ended up putting it down, I DNF'd it on Goodreads, although Goodreads I think still counted it for some reason, and I don't know how to change that without taking it off all of my shelves. But yeah, it was a very unsuccessful tome topple. <laughs> but I did technically do a buddy read, I just didn't complete it, so... Sorry, Maxine. We already talked about it, it's fine. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that the Diviners started to put me into a reading slump because I was hating, hate reading it so much. <laughs> so I picked up Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare because I remember loving this series. I, I've always loved it more than the Immortal Instruments. I read it first. Will and Tessa and Jim are just my favorite. So I was really excited to reread this and I was not disappointed. This actually kept my five star rating as opposed to the Mortal Instruments, which I gave like four and five stars when I read them because I was a horrible reviewer at that point. But I knocked those down to like two or three stars, <laughs> except for City of Glass, which is stuck at four. But this one stayed with its five star rating, and this is the only first, only the first book in the series. So I'm super excited to reread the rest of these, although I'm not looking forward to reading City of Angels? City of Fallen Angels? Yeah, City of Fallen Angels, because that's my least favorite Cassandra Clare book ever. But I am very much enjoying Lady Midnight right now. So these are all the books that I finished in the month of April, minus The Diviners, because I DNF'd it, but it was not a great reading month for me, but hopefully we'll make up for that in May. But thank you all for watching, and I will see all of you guys next time.